It's now time for members' statement. The member from Chatham, Connecticut. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's with a heavy heart that I rise today to offer my condolences and prayers to the family and friends of John D. Bradley, a trailblazer, if there ever was one, that left a lasting legacy on our whole region. John grew up on a family farm in Dover and was an active citizen in the Chatham-Kent community for his entire life. John served his country proudly during World War II and continued to serve his community when he returned home. He basically built most of Northeast Chatham. Projects such as the Thamesley Mall, the Wheels Inn, uh, the development of the Birdland subdivision, Thames Towers, Union Gas Building, Country Kitchen Restaurant, and the Holiday Inn were all part of his legacy. Uh, John never gave up on Chatham. He saw an opportunity where others saw loss. John and his two brothers developed the Wheels Inn out of the old Progressive Welders factory. That's a long time ago, uh, Speaker, and I might add, I grew up right around that area, and I remember it very, very well. In operation for 37 years, the facility was extensively expanded to include the Wheels Fitness and Racquet Club, the Wheels Spa, a Country Spa, the Wheels Bowling Center, and the Wild Zone Amusement Park. While passionate about business, John was perhaps even more passionate about his community. In 1990, he founded the Chatham-Kent Community Foundation, which now gives hundreds of thousands of dollars to local charities. He's a strong supporter of Ducks Unlimited, following in the footsteps of his father, Bruce, when it came to wildlife conservation, and to show how much he meant to the municipality, they named the John D. Bradley Convention Center in his honor. His proud and honest spirit embodied, uh, he will never be forgotten. He was a man who did all he could to build a community in every sense. Chatham Kent will surely miss one of its favorite sons. Thank you, Speaker, for allowing me to continue with this. Appreciate that. Thank you. Speaker, because of a bend in the river, the city of Detroit is actually due north of the city of Windsor. I know it's hard for some folks to picture that, but my friend Marty Gervais is Windsor's poet laureate, and here's his poem, Upside Down. <laughs> It's not a happy face, this shoreline of ours. Maybe it's because we're upside down, looking north instead of south like the rest of the country. Maybe we haven't learned to smile so readily, our weakness betrayed in that frown. I heard this first from the nuns in Riverside at the school two blocks south of the river. And with my buddies, we'd slip down past the heavy sewer grates and wend our way underground down to the shoreline, soaking ankles, wet shoes, and pant legs, and emerge wide-eyed to Detroit's dark, smoke-rising signals that blackened the blue sky. We were a band of boys pretending to be Tecumseh, or Simon Gertie, or John Wayne, or Gene Autry. The nuns in Riverside said we were the upside-down people. So we did our crazy cartwheels along the solitary riverbank, saluting the Americans to the north. Speaker, Marty has invited five other poets laureate to a special reading event at Willisted Manor in Windsor on the 12th of November, save the date. I invite all members of the legislature to join us to see the value in my private member's bill to create the position of poet laureate for Ontario. Thank you. The member, Stavis, the member from York Southwestern. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to rise in the House today to speak about the Jane Street Hub in my riding of uh, York Southwestern, who celebrated their fifth anniversary just this past week. This project has, was, has been funded by the Government of Ontario and the United Way Toronto and has now become an integral part of the community. It is a one-stop centre for health and social services which benefits residents of Weston, Mount Dennis and 3 2 neighbourhoods and surrounding areas. As an MPP, it is sometimes hard to see a project from start to finish. It has been my pleasure to be part of the Jane Street Hub project since its initial stages, from the drawings to the development of operations 
and now to a flourishing hub where six different community organizations have partnered together. And those include Unison Health and Community Services, Macaulay Child Development Center, Medenta Community Services, North York Community House, and Your Town Child and Family Center. These nonprofit organizations provide a wide range of invaluable services to those in need, and they are all under this one roof for the benefit and the convenience of our community. The hub also provides a space available for community meetings, including the use of a kitchen that residents, groups, nonprofit organizations, and others utilize. Mr. Speaker, I'm very proud to have the Jane Street Hub located in York South Weston. Thank you. Thank you. Do you remember statements? The member from Nipissing. Uh, speaker, communities in Nipissing are continuing to struggle with the problem of nuisance bears. They note there continues to be a large number of human encounters annually, which tie up police, re police resources and personnel, costing local taxpayers significant dollars. Municipalities note that MNR is currently assessing the success of the Spring Bear Hunt pilot project established in eight locations in the north, but they also note the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters advises the annual hunt is a successful wildlife management tool that minimizes human encounters and brings $40 million in economic activity to Ontario. City of North Bay and the Township of Chisholm passed resolutions this summer asking that the annual spring bear hunt be reinstated permanently and be allowed to continue during the province's review of the two-year pilot project. I can tell you about my own personal experiences with bears coming onto my property in Corbeil, and in fact, Patty and I just saw another bear while driving to a ratepayers meeting a couple of Fridays ago. To the minister, I say this. You know that Northerners know what the solution to this problem is, and we've always known. It's time to listen. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Roma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And there are heroes amongst us, Mr. Speaker. Hero Ian Boss. <clears throat> Ian lost his father, excuse me, Ted Boss, after a brave fight with cancer. On May 21, 2015, Ian embarked on a cross country walk in memory of his father and in honor of the excellent care that his father received. His walk is to raise awareness to end-of-life care and to stimulate the difficult discussions for palliative care societies across Canada. His message is simple. Support hospice palliative care in your community. I walked 26 kilometres with this gentleman. We talked about family, dreams, his family, his dreams, and the need for proper guardrails across the country. Ian knows what I'm talking about. But this man is walking across Canada. Ian's walk for end-of-life care. Look it up. That's a hero. The College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario awarded Mindamoya General Practitioner Dr. Andrew Stadnick with the 2014 Outstanding Physician Award. Over 20,000 doctors in Ontario, only four doctors received the significant award. In a humble hero's reply, he said, I just find it a little awkward when there are so many other doctors across the island and province that are more deserving. Dr. Stadnick, along with superhero psychic Dr. Nick Jeeves, saved what has now been a thriving hospital in Mindamoya, and they have mentored a team of health care professionals who are all heroes in my books. Dr. Stadnick, you are a hero to so many. Sometimes heroes must remain anonymous, but like any Cape Crusader who swoops to save the day, the township of Asaganac has a super local garden hero who donated an entire harvest to the local food bank. A truck and trailer filled with local grown produce is greatly appreciated by the area families in need. A Asaganac super local garden hero, whoever you are, thank you. You saved the day. For the member statements, the member from Burlington. Mr. Speaker, I rise in the House today because it's time for all of us to think outside the car, and my riding of Burlington is embracing this opportunity. Our Mayor, Rick Goldring, has launched a social media campaign to promote alternative transportation this fall to help facilitate a greener, healthier, and less congested Burlington. In my riding, 90 per cent of all trips are made by car. In 2011, 50 per cent of daily trips in Burlington were five kilometres or less. That's slightly higher than the national average of 40 per cent of all trips, and it's only 
only a 20-minute bike ride. The City of Burlington's Think Outside the Car Challenge began on September 15, shortly after students returned to school, and will run until October 30. In fact, the launch event was held at a high school in my riding, M.M. Robinson. Many of the students at M.M. walk or ride their bikes to school, and they are led and encouraged by their very enthusiastic teacher, Jeff Shepard. We know that approximately 40 per cent of urban air pollution is generated by the transportation sector and that obesity is a rising problem in our province. Alternative transit like cycling, walking or public transit reduces air pollution, improves physical health and helps to build a more safe and connected community. As a regular GO train commuter and cyclist, I think outside the car because it gives me a chance to see my community from a different perspective, helps me to stay active and also makes economic sense. Speaker, I'd like to challenge all the members of this House and their constituents to think outside the car and to share their hashtag think outside the car moment on social media. To participate in the challenge, please visit the City of Burlington website or follow the hashtag think outside the car on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. Member from Ladder for Athletics and Addington. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, referendums have a long history throughout this country and our province. Some of the biggest questions facing, facing our nation have been determined by referring the matter to a referendum, such as the conscription crisis of 1942, the referendum and repeal of prohibition, and the Charlotte Town Accord. Referendums are a necessary tool that complements our democracy and empowers citizens by giving them the opportunity to influence public policies directly. We've also seen referenda used recently in Ontario for both de-amalgamation and proportional representation. But referenda are always at the prerogative of the government, not at the behest of the people. If all governments were responsive and respectful of people, there would never be a need for either democracy or referenda. However, sometimes majority governments attempt to steamroll legislation through and in the process stifle public opinion and influence. This has become all too familiar here in our assembly. The sale of Hydro One is but the recent, most recent example. Today I'll be introducing my private member's bill, the Referendum Act, which will allow people of Ontario to trigger a referendum via petition and mandating the government to hold a referendum on these important policies. Referenda would be a great step forward in empowering citizens and enhancing our democracy here in Ontario. And I encourage all members to support the Referendum Act. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this past weekend, I had the pleasure of helping mark the 25th anniversary of the Bread and Roses Housing Cooperative in Kitchener. This is a very unique, not-for-profit, mixed-income community. It's situated in a heritage building in downtown Kitchener, and it's just down the street from my constituency office. Launched in 1990, the co-op consists of 66 apartments in two adjacent buildings. The Heritage Building has 21 apartments and the six-story high-rise includes the remaining 45. Now, what makes this residence very unique is the rent. It's affordable in downtown Kitchener. The people who live there promote collective responsibility and well-being. Everyone pitches in sharing their skills as they govern themselves through collective decision-making and the handling of their finances. There is a special focus on diversity and respect among neighbours, and the residents are also concerned with their impact on the environment as they try to minimize their environmental footprint wherever possible. Mr. Speaker, the story behind the name Bread and Roses is rooted in a 1920s union song sung by textile workers who were rallying support for better working conditions and wages. The line, give us bread, but give us roses, was the inspiration for the founding board. They believe passionately that residents needed affordable housing with a very strong sense of community. Mm -hmm. I congratulate them on creating such a unique, affordable, and healthy place to live, and I enjoy having them as neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. For the, six, the member from Brampton Springdale. Today, I rise to recognize the 17 high school students in the Peel region who recently received a United Achievers Club scholarship. On September the 19th, the United Achievers Club of Brampton held their 31st annual scholarship dinner and recognition awards. This annual event recognizes students with Black or Caribbean heritage who have a strong academic record and have been accepted to pursue post-secondary studies at a registered college or university. 31 years ago, the United Achievers Club of Brampton presented its first $250 scholarship to a graduating student from Brampton. In the three decades since, 
A total of 334 students have been awarded scholarships, totaling near, nearly $337,000. In addition to acad academics, the students claim a variety of interests and talents, as well as strong community involvement. Established in 1980, the United Achievers Club of Brampton also recognizes members and community workers who have made significant contributions to the growth and development of the organization. Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to thank the United Achievers Club of Brampton for the leadership they provide to youth in my community and their 35 years of promoting the culture and achievements of Canadians of Black and Caribbean heritage. I also wish to co uh, commend this year's scholarship award recipients on their achievements to date. I am grateful for this recognition, recognition you have received and for all you will contribute in the coming years to make our province an even better place to live. Thank you. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's now time for